I am Andrew Bustamante, a former covered CIA intelligence officer and founder of the Everyday Espionage Training Platform. Ask me anything. Are there really big secrets that you know that could land you the country in terrible trouble if it came out to the public? Yes. And I wish I could forget them. What are some signs that people are being mischievous or other psychological tricks you may know? Never trust a quiet person. They are listening and learning and that makes them the smartest person in the room. Is it true that on foreign's oil, one call will summon black subs to take you to safety? Just curious. Yes, but with different delivery times. Smiling face with sunglasses. What would you say is the number one rule for undercover agents? Listen. Don't talk. Given the ease with which we can communicate electronically today, is there still a role in modern tradercraft for dead drops? Same question on number stations. But because they are known to still exist, I presume the answer is yes. If anything. The growing dependency and usage of digital technology underscores the value of classic tradercraft like dead drops. I would take a physical dead drop over a digital transmission any day. Way fewer risks. Greater control. And no permanent record. What's the closest you can get to talking about a past mission without getting in trouble? And can you give us a story that gets that close to the line? I had to run counter surveillance against a rogue state target in a third world country in 2011. I was supporting a second officer on the ground who had to do face-to-face meetings despite not knowing the mental state or intentions of the target. This is the worst type of operation to run because we have no information and no control. But the potential payout is significant enough to outweigh the risk. When we got eyes on the target and observed their behavior, they were highly unpredictable, wearing winter clothes in a hot climate, appearing openly hostile and aggressive to strangers on the street, clearly disheveled and surly, because the operating window was so limited. We had to make a decision whether or not to allow the meeting or render the target separately. We ultimately decided to allow the in-person meeting in a public space only to find out that the target wasn't strapped with dynamite or intending to kill our officer, but rather he had a nasty flu but was dedicated enough to talking to an American that he made the trip anyway. After he vomited on the officer's shoes, we were able to collect enough intelligence to put a dent in that rogue state's operational objectives for over a year. Two questions what are some key skills you'd recommend for someone wanting to pursue a career in intelligence what graduate programs would you recommend for someone in intelligence? Key skills would include mastering short term memory and mastering conversational dynamics. As far as graduate programs go, look into anthropology, foreign area studies, and sociology. If you go into the hard sciences, you could also end up in intelligence but less likely in the field. How often does America have a near miss that the general population is completely oblivious about? I think more importantly America often has huge victories that Americans can never hear about. Talking about how CIA thwarted a massive attack in Chicago or prevented a terrorist attack at a concert doesn't make for good news. If anything, it incites fear and negatively impact the communities that were originally targeted. How much can you tell about a person by innocent things? Like their burrito order at Chipotle. Innocent people don't eat at Chipotle. What's the coolest spy fact about yourself you're able to tell us? Is there a gadget that 11 year old would freak out over? I once was workout buddies with General Petralius when he was the director of CIA. And he kicks my ass in morning PT for a week straight. As for a cool gadget for an 11 year old. We had a tech guy who accidentally invented fart spray that lasted for hours after it permeated the air. He was trying to create an adhesive spray that would allow rubber soles and rubber gloves to temporarily stick to wet vertical surfaces. Who do you think killed JFK? I have no idea, and it is extremely frustrating to me. In Narcos there were depictions of some CIA personnel having real disdain for the D and their war on drugs any of it true? Totally true. CIA is like the oldest child in a family they believe they are the best, doing the most important work, and worthy of the most attention. And the funny thing is, CIA even has their own counter-narcotics element to do these job better than they do it. 
What motivates someone to get involved in intelligence work in your opinion? What motivates someone in another regime to cooperate with intelligence work in your opinion? Motivations are a tricky thing. Many of us get into it because we are curious and servicer driven. Who wouldn't want to try? Right. But for those who ultimately sell the secrets of their own county to an enemy, that is a much darker world of manipulation and deceit. In your experience, who was the most professional foreign intelligence agency you engaged with? The Japanese. I know. Who even thinks of the Japanese intelligence service? I'm having a hard time formulating this question properly so my apologies if it doesn't make sense with your best guess. How many years behind are civilians to the government in terms of technology, if at all? I would say that the commercial sector of the United States is about 10 years ahead of government. Unless you want to be operating on Windows 7 and asking Facebook to share facial recognition best practices. The average American consumer is on the cutting edge of technology far more than the federal government U0001F92R. What's your opinion on Eleven's recent campaign to expand Chinese influence by building rails and centralized infrastructure around the world? More specifically how do you think they will leverage these projects to gain access influence in Africa the Middle East? The Chinese are singularly skilled at building influence by investing in tangible infrastructure. Most investment in the US is intangible and not directly impactful to the majority of Americans. For that reason. We don't feel ingratiated to those investing the money. The Chinese know that building a bridge today means every person who crosses that bridge knows. Our friends the Chinese gave us this bridge. And that appreciation lasts for multiple generations. Are there secret societies or powerful people that have huge influence on the intelligence community? Texas A&M and the Mormon Church. That's not a joke. Which country regime is the biggest threat to US? For instance, North Korea, Russia, China, ISIS, etc. And in your opinion, how can we improve our safety within US borders? Thank you. Our biggest strategic threat is China. We are so tightly wound together and so fundamentally opposite that we are destined to conflict. But the more immediate threat to the US is our own infighting. When we kick and scratch at each other, we are doing the enemy's job for them. Were you ever in a position where you were questioning your orders or your morals in completing an assignment? Absolutely. It's something that every officer faces at some point in their career. For me, it was the beginning of my planning and exit strategy. For many, compromising on your morals is the first step to compromising on other ambitions and resigning yourself to a typical government career. Great question. And I am proud to tell my son and my daughter that the reason I left was because I refused to compromise. I hope that one day they will support that decision. With data analytics becoming bigger every day, and our gov becoming more tech savvy by the minute, do you think an unofficial credit system will eventually make its way into the hands of the intelligence community for its populace? We already sort of have this with the clearance system ETC, but I mean for those who are uncleared as well. If by credit you are referring to an unofficial clearance system, I could absolutely see it happening. The IC finds itself in constant need of experts far outside their talent pool. It would only make sense to use prevalent open source data as a way to produce low risk experts that could be called upon to serve in times of need. Any advice for a former Marine Corps Intel analyst currently looking for a job as an outsource analyst with the government or private company? My clearance is expired and I'm moving to Germany soon with my wife. Thanks. Look for companies doing open source intelligence collection. It is a booming industry and they would kill for someone with your experience and proven discipline. Flexed bicep. Thumbs up. Hello Andrew, it is believed my grandfather was CIA due to his mysterious death, military background and years after his death family finding that he had 12 plus aliases mostly of Russian names. The official story is that my grandmother shot and killed him and then took her life but my dad and uncles remember two men coming and putting the boys in their room and taking my grandparents into their room where they heard shots being fired. This happened in 64 65 during the Cold War. My uncle went back to where this happened and spoke to the sheriff who handled the case. He said he remembered it but wasn't able to speak about it. I guess my question is, is there any way to find out a more concrete answer on what happened? My grandmother is Japanese and her living family in Japan are full of shame due to the official story being suicide and I know my dad and uncles would sleep better at night knowing what happened to their parents. Thank you. Whoa. 
I know just enough about Japanese culture to know how heavy this must sit with your family. Unfortunately, I do not have an answer for you. Based on what you've learned since your grandfather's death, he certainly seems intel related. But whether CIA or another service, I'm not sure. If he died in service to freedom, rest assured he is honored by a star on the wall at CIA headquarters. I know that does little to ease your pain, but it means a great deal to those heroes who walk past those starts every day. Two questions from me, one in your professional opinion. What percentage of the things we hear or see on the news is the truth and what percentage of it is engineered to based on your personal experiences? How willing would you say our intelligence community is when it comes to deceiving us whether it be in our own interest and the interest of other parties? I know the assumed answer is extremely. But I suppose my real question is how accurate that is and if it's in fact the reality. How are we supposed to trust that the intelligence community have our best interests in mind and not say, the military industrial complex or the next highest bidder? By we. Our. Etc. I mean American citizens. Just to be clear. 1. Very little of the news is true. But even less is engineered. Most news sources are desperately grasping for attention. So they say anything that might win one stroke to a percent more viewership to the IC and the government at large has a long history of deceiving Americans when it serves national interest. Most deceptions are simply limiting information, but some are openly false information used to misdirect malicious actors who are paying attention to the news your intelligence community is fulfilling its obligation to meet policymakers requirements. A federal mandate. The truth is that we have to elect the right policymakers if we want to drive a forthright intelligence community. Have you ever worked alongside with SAD? And if so, what were their main backgrounds? Sockham, CIA, etc. Do they stay busy? I cannot disclose my background specifically, but SAD officers are some of the humblest, most incredible people you can meet. Selfless. Courageous and obviously crazy. There are equal parts special forces and totally self-taught badass. Why should we expect anyone in the CIA to tell us the truth about anything? You shouldn't. That's why I left. Why did you leave the CIA? I met my wife at CIA. She is also a former covert intelligence officer, and we were a tandem operating couple. When we found out we were pregnant, we had to ask some hard questions about whether serving a family or our nation was more important to us. Fortunately, the highly capable men and women still serving made it possible for us to choose our family. What advice do you have for those wanting to take their first steps into your career in today's world? Travel abroad, learn a language, and smoke pot now you won't get the chance later. Are you endangering yourself or others by doing this? That is a hard question. I am taking some personal risk, as is my family. But we assess the risk to be minimal. Bad people will always do bad things. But that doesn't keep us from speaking up. What is the process like to be an intelligence officer in the CIA? Do you just go on user jobs and hope for the best? Or is there a certain amount of paying your due so to speak before you work your way into the job? The good news is that there is no ladder. It need to pay dues. You actually can apply formally. Or even at a job fair as funny as that seems. But the process really starts when you get identified as a viable candidate. That is when the psych evils and test scenarios start. Hope is always helpful though. What made you do an AMA? I had a number of people attend my lectures or meet me in person who recommended AMA. I am still a social media noob. But I figured it was as good a time as any to learn a new skill and put myself out there. Thank you. Thanks for watching our videos. We work hard to make sure you keep coming back for the content we produce. And if you like this video, please feel free to subscribe our channel. We would love to hear your own stories in the comment section below.